um, and empty guy and awesome sound. And to our photographers, Kun uh, Dao and Kun Salopat, thank you very much. I know uh, if Dolly and I are throwing something together, you'd probably expect Dolly to be the speaker. Uh, but uh, you know, we also have to thank, uh, I speak for both of us, but I would like to thank Dolly for, she has put more effort into putting this together than I have. Um, she actually, uh, because she was so busy putting this together, that's why I have been given the responsibility of speaking. <laughs> so, um, but, but we would like to thank all of you for coming. You're all very important to my parents. And, um, you know, some of you can't have come from very far away on very short notice. And they're, you know, it was actually quite hard to keep the list as small as it was. And, <laughs> and so you were all uh, very important to my parents. Um, so, um, it was not hard to um, talk about my parents, however, because um, even though I didn't have a lot of time, my last ten and a half weeks of my life have been particularly busy because of the birth of Ben, uh, um, it doesn't take a lot of effort to say good things about my parents. Uh, you know, we're here to celebrate uh, both my dad's 70th birthday and my mom Dad's 40th anniversary. So my dad's birthday, March 7th of 1983. Uh, the world has changed a lot since he was born. Uh, I had to do a little bit of research. Uh, so in 1943, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was still the president. World War II was still going on. Since we're in Baltimore, I wanted to put into perspective with some local examples how things have changed. Uh, in, when my dad was born, there was uh, no Baltimore baseball team. The Baltimore Orioles were the St. Louis Browns at the time. And there also was no Baltimore football team. Actually, uh, since my dad was born, uh, one Baltimore football team went out of business. One moved to Indianapolis. Uh, another one came from Canada and went back to Canada. And there's one now called the Ravens, who have been in the news recently. Uh, some of you may have heard that they uh, lost to the Redskins in December. So that's what I'm In May of this year, Debbie and I went to uh, Thailand for our honeymoon, and we got to go to my dad's hometown of Pitsunawak. Uh, we, during our trip to Pitsunawak, we were able to stop at the Folk Museum, and uh, the Folk Museum was a very interesting trip for us. Um, I got to, one of the exhibits was a boat a uh, replica of a boat very similar to the one that my dad was uh, living in when he was a child. Uh, you know, it was very striking because I can tell that my dad has come a very long way uh, from, from that time. Um, he's really been able to live the American dream and he has, he now lives in a house with a pool that could fit many boats the size of his childhood home. You know, but he's appreciative of what he has, and he wants to give back for the experiences, for the for being so fortunate. Um, he, through TPAA and other means, uh, has managed to do medical missions, um, do charity work, working with many of you to allow that to happen. Um, so, you know, my father, he's an amazing person. He's kind. He always looks out for others. He's an amazing, you know, son. He still calls his mom every day, uh, every weekend. He's an amazing, 
amazing brother to his siblings. He's, you know, we're here because he's an amazing husband. Uh, you know, friends to all of you. Uh, father to myself and Dolly, and grandfather to Lily, Ella, and Ben. So, um, someone this amazing surely deserves a better half to complete him, and that person would be my mother. When Dolly and I were growing up, many women uh, who admired my mom would often ask us, how does your mom manage to raise you guys and be such a successful career woman? Um, my answer would usually be, she doesn't really do much. <laughs> She doesn't really do anything special. Uh, at my young age, though, I wasn't wise enough to see what was so obvious to everybody else, that my mom is an exceptional woman. Um, you know, as I grew up, though, I was eventually able to see this, and it did benefit me directly at one point. I had a medical school interview that was not going very well, and during the med school interview, the, my interviewer, who was a woman, um, happened to ask me about my influences. I mentioned my mother. And I think that was the turning point of the interview. And I kind of rambled on and on, talking about my mom is a career woman. Um, she sees over 60 patients a day. Um, I never really felt like she um, gave, us, gave me or my sister any less time than any other parent. Um, she loved us tremendously. Um, I know that she would um, spend time with us, and after we went to sleep, she would have to do mountain loads of paperwork. And, um, you know, so I went on and on and on. And, you know, we went over the allotted time, and I was like, uh oh, I have not really answered her questions. I've just been talking about my mom the whole time. <laughs> and, However, um, when the, a lot of time was up, she, she kept on asking more questions about my mom. <laughs> and uh, I answered them. And I think, um, as you can tell, I did get into medical school. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that my interviewer said, if, if this is Superwoman's son, I think he's, and he has half her genes, then we'll, it'll be good to accept him into our medical school. <laughs> So, uh, I'd like to go back to my dad's last year of medical school. Uh, while uh, he was a senior, uh, he, a beautiful first year, caught his eye. Um, if anyone has been looking up at the uh, projection screen today, you can see what my mom looked like in medical school. And she's just as beautiful today. Uh, but, uh, so, he, he, he fell in love with this woman. However, he didn't really do anything about it. Uh, his reasoning was that a first year medical student should focus on her studies. So, no, he didn't want to do anything yet. Um, however, he waited a few years and uh, started hearing rumors that this guy liked her. And he's like, uh oh, I, I gotta step it off. I gotta do something. And so, you have two options. You can either, you know, approach her, ask her out on a date, or you can trick her into going out on a date. My dad chose the second option. <laughs> so, uh, my dad concocted a plan where uh, one, my mom went to a party. It was under a hair it was under my mom's impression that one of her girlfriends uh, was going to be at this uh, dinner party for her. Um, so my mom arrives, and the only people there are my dad and my mom's girlfriend's boyfriend. And uh, my mom's friend is not there. And uh, the, my, my mom's friend's boyfriend, 
eventually says, oh, she must have gotten busy. She, she must not be coming, so uh, I guess I'll, I'll take off. And uh, leaving just my mom and my dad. <laughs> I'm not even sure if, if my mom wanted to stay, but uh, my mom was just a medical student, and my dad was the surgical chief resident, so she couldn't, in the medical hierarchy, no medical student could possibly disrespect the chief surgical resident, and so she was forced to stay. Um, so while it was uh, obligation and respect that caused her to stay that night, it has been true love that has kept them together for the rest of their lives. Although I don't remember this very well, when I was six years old, my dad was given a diagnosis of liver cirrhosis, and he was actually told he wasn't going to live much longer. Um, I, I can only imagine um, how devastating that was to them at the time. And um, since my dad didn't think he'd get to see Bell and I grow up, and you know, my mom thought she'd be you know, raising us. Um, by herself. So, you know, while I know my mom will always find a way, um, you know, you know, she does need my dad. Um, you know, although my mom's very famous for her big appetite, she's actually a very picky eater, and um, she doesn't cook. And without my dad, um, let's face it, she'd starve to death. Um, you know, so, and you know, likewise, yeah. without my mom, my dad, um, I'm not even sure how he would be able to buy a plane ticket if he had to. Uh, he wouldn't own a computer uh, or a cell phone. Um, you know, they're just really meant to, you know, be together. So, you know, I'm really thankful that the diagnosis was wrong because we've, you know, we've all been so fortunate. We've just had a really great life and you know had so many happy memories with both both of you and Dolly and it's been great and I can't imagine not having had you at all my graduations, my wedding, you know, every family holiday where we're all together. So um, you know every time I see you with um, you know your grandchildren then Ella. Um, you've been the best father that I could have asked for. Um, mom, you're the best mom that I could have asked for. Um, your hard work and love have made Dolly and I the people that we are. And, you know, we'll never be able to thank you enough. And you've set a great example for us. And Dolly and I have been lucky enough to have found, you know, excellent spouses ourselves. And um, through your example, and we should probably be as good of people as you are. Um, we hope to raise our children as well as you have raised us. So um, we just love you so much. And we're honored to be your children. And you know, this party is just a very small token of our appreciation for all you've done for us. And we're just so happy to celebrate here with you today. So happy birthday, Dad. Happy anniversary. Amen.